Hello, welcome to this wonderful economics teaching conference and thank you very much for your interest. My name is Lavinia Moldovan and I teach at Mount Royal University in Calgary, Canada. Through this presentation, I would like to share my experience in creating and implementing a photo assignment and a principles of microeconomics course and perhaps inspire some of you to use a similar approach in your work. The assignment asks students to make connections between their own world and microeconomic theory and do it explicitly without us assuming that they would make these connections on their own and also to facilitate engagement. Chu and Serbin identify nine cognitive challenges to student learning. One of them is the student mental mindset in that students may believe that the course is irrelevant to them. And the other one is the transfer of learning from short-term memory to long-term memory. And then Chu and Serbin say that students can vary in their ability and propensity to apply course concepts appropriately outside the classroom context. Students often fail to apply knowledge beyond the end of the course. While we have no control over what students do beyond the end of our course, we can teach them how to apply economic theory in contexts they are familiar with and encourage them to keep practicing once the course is over. We all use instructor-created examples to provide context for economic theory, but it is difficult to find something that all students can relate to, as you can see on this slide. The assignment I introduced in my Principles of Microeconomics course relies on student-created examples so that these diagrams that we all use in our classes find their place in their long-term memory instead of overwhelming them. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about this assignment. I asked the students to photograph something that interests them, and then they had to write about the economics that they're able to identify in the, in the image to demonstrate that they can make connections with economic theory. My first attempt was in winter 2019 when I invited 140 students to participate in this um, economics photography competition called Calgary Through an Economics Lens. I also obtained a little bit of funding so they could win either $100 or $50. And now I will show you a few examples of their work. This uh, student talked about the marginal utility of a cup of coffee versus the marginal utility of arriving on time to my 8.30 class. And you can see from her watch uh, which marginal utility was higher. Now, you see that this student shows that she was the one taking the picture, which is an idea that was introduced by Al-Bahrani et al. in 2016 in their econ selfie assignment. Now, in my assignment, I do not ask the students to place themselves in the picture, but they have to be the ones who take the picture, and they also have to be able to demonstrate that they were the photographers. Now, let me show you a few other examples. You learn a lot about your students, and then they also teach you how you could explain some of the concepts so that they understand them better. So, for example, this student actually makes these engravements by herself, and then she decided to talk about the tragedy of the commons and how it affected jaguars in Peru. Of course, we also have hockey games, and this is the annual hockey game between our university and the University of Calgary, and the student rightfully identified that the demand for beer increases when there's a hockey game, and one's willingness to purchase is high if everyone else has a drink in their hand. Now, here are a couple of things that you need to know about such assignments. I, when I organized them as a competition, I only convinced eight students out of 140 to participate. Maybe some of you can sell this better, but th these were my results. If you ask the students to vote for their favorite um, image, or actually the image that... Um, best incorporates economic theory, well, you end up getting a lot of votes for cute dogs. Uh, 
So I decided that in future iterations, I will make the assignment mandatory and I will grade it on a rubric to somehow uh, try to be as objective as possible. So right now I am using this assignment in my class. The students have to incorporate their image in a template. They have to list the economics keywords that they will be addressing and they also have to write a 300 word explanation. The word limit is not extremely important but I'm just trying to avoid getting either two lines or 30 pages. I usually have between two and four photographs that the students have to submit throughout the term, and they could be worth between 10% to 20% of their course grade, just to create enough of an incentive for them to think carefully about this assignment. And then you can see some details from the grading rubric here. This is an assignment that was due in April 2020, as you can easily see. We were all facing these shortages, so there were a lot of assignments about toilet paper. And it is interesting because the assignment works, even though we cannot really anticipate what will happen between the beginning of the term and the end of the, and the, end of the term. We also had unusually low gas prices in Calgary at that time, so you could buy one liter of gasoline for 22 Canadian cents um, compared to a price of $1.27 that you can see one year later. This is another interesting setup. The picture is beautiful and you learn that some of the students are actually training horses to barrel race and they can talk about the opportunity cost of doing this while also raising a two-year-old and um, doing making the best out of this pandemic. I also learned what nulling was. So apparently this is just a technique of arranging objects in an image in a way similar to what you see here. And then the student talked about utility maximization subject to a budget constraint. Of course, dogs are very popular, so you should expect a few pictures of dogs. In um, this one, the student talked about the supply and demand of all sorts of uh, dog-related products and services. This is the Calgary Public Library. I didn't even know that it was open in March 2021, but apparently one of the students had had enough um, staying at home and studying. So he was um, doing this at the central library. And then he talked about public goods, the free rider problem, resources, taxes, and so on. And just to emphasize that dogs will show up a lot, uh, but it doesn't really matter as long as the students um, can use them to talk about economics. This one is from a hiking trail from Canmore, which is a town very, very close to Banff National Park. But um, at the time the picture was taken, there was no need to pay for a national park pass to go to Canmore. So that's why the student was saying that she was enjoying the town on a budget. And then she talked about demand, supply and elasticity. So again, just to um, emphasize this, the goal of the assignment was for the students to connect their own world and microeconomic theory. And their work is extremely diverse and it is more diverse than the examples that I could come up with thinking that they're able to connect to them. So I really like using these student created examples. Of course, the assignment can be also used in a principles of macroeconomics class. Um, I use it in intermediate microeconomics, um, this time not really for marks, but um, I just asked the students to take pictures of substitutes, complements, uh, neutrals, economic bads, and then draw the associated diagram. Diagrams. You can also use it for development economics if the students are able to identify or take pictures of economic inequality, uh, environmental economics, as well as urban economics. In terms of the related literature, the closest uh, papers 
would be Al Bahrani et al. You see, they have uh, two papers with a, a slightly different set of co authors. Uh, both of them talk about using econ selfies and they also emphasize sharing these images through social media. I do not do this in my class. The students just submitted their work through our learning management system and then I shared some of their images in class, where the, whether that was at the classroom or online. It worked very well well in both cases. And then Davis has two papers about asking students to write poetry, which would be another way to ask students to create their own examples. And there are also papers about students creating videos, which and many of these uh, papers are listed in Pico's um, literature re review called the Economics Instructor's Toolbox. So for anyone interested in more details, they will uh, find several papers there. Now, again, the hope is that the students will integrate economic theory in their general way of thinking. So if they end up having these uh, diagrams or these formulas in their long term working memory and then applying them in their everyday life, I would consider this a success because then they can also extend this to professional settings and, and so on. Thank you very much.